Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm going to be doing my favorites video for October and November of 2020. If you haven't seen any of my favorites videos, what I do is really only do these every like two or three months, because I really want these to not be just like recent things that I try a couple of times and say they're a favorite. Anything in one of my favorites videos, they really are a tried and true favorite, to which I would really recommend to any of you, and only recommend after several months of like thorough testing. So none of these are really new products, but they are products that are favorites of mine, especially within the last couple of months. So I feel like the last few months I've been changing and trying some new things. So I've got a couple of random favorites here, but once again, they are all older products that I've been really liking over the last few months. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, my first favorite is going to be a bit of a surprise to a couple if you've been following my channel for a bit, because this is a product that I liked at first but struggled to actually use and now the product is actually half empty. This is Dermacol. This is the Dermacol makeup cover and I don't want to unfurl it but this is like half empty now because I've actually used half of the bottle. At first I really purchased this because of the Taylor now known as Taylor Wynn. She had a lot of cystic acne and used this as a super full coverage foundation. I picked this up because I was looking for a good full coverage spot concealer. So actually, if you go back to the very beginning of my channel, my first few videos feature this exact tube of Dermacol, the same tube, because I've had it for that long. Three years, at least, at this point. Mm. And it still works. Like, it doesn't smell off, and I've used it. I'm actually wearing it today, so it still is uh, workable and usable. The only thing is that back then, I couldn't, like, when I tried using Dermacol as a full face foundation, it did not work for me. It was just cakey and flaky, and it didn't work for me. But since 2017, 2018, I want to say, I've been using this as a spot concealer, and it's amazing as a spot concealer. Again, check out my earlier videos, because I do have full in-depth videos about how I use this to spot conceal. The reason it's a favorite for this month particularly is because I pulled this out and I realized I have this whole tube and a whole unopened tube as backup. So I wanted to like challenge myself to use this more often and in more ways. So I started using this as an eye primer and as an under eye primer. It did not work well as an eye primer because I really did interact differently with different eyeshadow formula so it really wasn't the best there but I tried this as an under eye primer and it worked so well I was shocked at how well it worked. So, since it was working so well as an under eye primer, I was like, let me try it all over my face as a foundation. So I did, and surprisingly, it's actually been working pretty well. I'm actually wearing this all over my face as a full face of foundation today. I am wearing a different concealer, but everything else is just the Dermacol makeup cover. And I've noticed that if I'm not looking for like the super thick, stark, full coverage look, what I can do is just go into the really light layer and blend it out with a sponge and not a brush. And it looks so nice and it works so well. So I've been surprised at how much I like this. And again, just by using it as a foundation and a concealer the last couple of weeks, I've been able to get it like half empty. So I kind of want to go ahead and pan this just to pan it so that I can move on to my backup and just have a, a more concise collection. So be it. Uh, but I'm shocked at how much I like this. And so this is, despite it being a product I've had for at least three years, this is a recent favorite. All right, moving on next, I mentioned I was blending out this with a sponge, and I feel like I haven't had this in my favorites for a couple of months, uh, but this is the Shop Miss A Black Teardrop Sponge. It's dirty because I used this one today. I love these sponges. I just picked up 10 more during their Black Friday sale. These are typically a dollar each, which is a steal for an amazing face sponge, but during Black Friday, they were 75 cents each. So you're damn right, I picked up 10 more. <laughs> these are all the sponges I typically keep now. Um, so what I'd like to do is try to replace these every three months, which I believe is the recommended amount of time you're supposed to just keep sponges. Even when you keep up with cleaning them, you're supposed to only keep them for three or four months before you get rid of them. Um, but I love this sponge. It is squishy, it is the perfect size, it is a dollar. You really can't beat the Shop Mise sponge. And I do want to go ahead and say out of the bat, um, I, Really loved Shop Mise's products and their sponges particularly before I got an affiliate link. They did give me um, an account and an affiliate code, which is down in the description box of all of my videos. I do want to go ahead and say all of their products are super affordable and really great. I believe I have a favorites video of just Shop Mise products, which I'll have up above. But honestly, like 
it's the only brand I have an affiliate link with for a reason. They have really good products and they're super affordable and I only make a single digit commission on these products so it's not like I'm making a lot of money off of them. I really just want to have more people go and like try their products and realize you can get really good base everyday products for not a crazy price. So that uh, that link is going to be in the description box for anyone who would like to use it. Please don't feel, you know, pressured to use it, but it is always there if you would like to. Um, but honestly, even if you don't use my link, check out Shop Ms. A, their products, especially their sponges, their face powders, their concealers are fantastic. Moving on, the next product is kind of a two for one ish. This is the Wet n Wild Natural Face Setting Spray. Yes. So this is a two for one because A, I like the original setting spray. Wet n Wild has some of the best setting sprays that you can find for an affordable price at the drugstore. They're amazing. I specifically love their rose setting spray. It's the best, but also this one is pretty good. So this isn't only good because of the actual setting spray itself, but because of the packaging. This is the like perfect like affordable setting spray packaging I've seen. I've actually had to depot other setting sprays into this bottle, which I did. So I tried out a Pixie setting spray, but the bottle got all gunked up and wouldn't spray well after a couple of like one or two weeks of use, it got gunked up and wouldn't spray as well. So I actually depotted that Pixie spray into this bottle and it worked better. <laughs> So of course that's gonna factor into my pixie review, but like the fact that this is such like really good packaging for an affordable setting spray and like it never got it never gets gunked up. I've used up the entirety of this setting spray as well as refilling it with the pixie setting spray. Never got it never got gunked up, it never had any issues, it was just fantastic. So that's why I see this as a two for one. Not only is it a good affordable setting spray in itself, but you could also keep this packaging because it's really easy to just unscrew this part and add more product in here. So you could also just keep this and use this for any other setting sprays you want that come in like really shitty packaging, you know? So that's why I love this. It's a really good product and it's also fantastic packaging, especially at the drugstore. Next, I have a product that I've put in, I believe, a couple of these favorites videos over the years, but this is the NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. I fell in love with the ABH Clear Brow Gel a while ago after getting a full-size product, after getting a sample size, and from then on, I was on a journey to find a good, affordable dupe of that product. This is the closest I've gotten, and... What I'm looking for in a clear brow gel, it seems to be a lot different than I guess what is currently trendy or what a lot of people are looking for in a clear brow gel. So make sure you pay attention to what you're actually looking for here. I have thick brow hairs, clearly, and my hair is curly, which means actually my brow hairs, if they grow out too long, will get curly. <laughs> I've seen it. They, if, I grow, if they grow out too long, they will curl under here and I gotta trim them or put them into place. That being said, when I'm looking for a brow gel, I'm looking for something that is really going to like glue my brows down, which is why I liked the ABH Clear Brow Gel so much, but it was so expensive. This is such an affordable option. It lasts for at least three months for each bottle. I get them on Amazon or in the NYX store for like between three and like six dollars each, and it just works so well. Like my brows... That's the thing, if you do not like the feeling of your brows being gelled into place, you won't like this. But if you have thick, unruly brow hairs and you need something to like hold them in place and show them who's boss, this this is <laughs> this is your product. Because my brows are pretty crunchy right now, but I need my brows to be crunchy. Because if my brows are not crunchy, my hair is going to go blue blah, blah, and like do whatever the hell it wants to do. I don't need it to do that. <laughs> So that's why I love this so much. I've bought more of these than I can count at this point, but this has been a continuous favorite of mine. Next, we have another longtime favorite of mine. This is a mascara that I am also wearing today. This is the Essence Lash Princess False, La False. <laughs> False Lash Effect Mascara, and this is the green bottle. I love this mascara. This is the closest I have gotten to looking like I'm wearing falsies in everyday life. Um, the bottle is just so nice and luxe and I love the packaging. The applicator itself is 
slightly shaped into kind of like an arrow. Um, so you've got a little bit of definition here, but not too much. Uh, the product is a little bit wet when you first open it, but once you have it open for a couple of days, it does dry out a little bit to like the perfect balance that I personally find for mascara. I love this. I have bought more of these than I can count, and the fact that this is between $3.99 and $4.99 at most drugstores or at Ulta, I like this more than like higher end mascaras I've tried. I've tried Marc Jacobs, I've tried YSL, I've tried other mascaras. I can't really justify purchasing those when I know that this mascara is so good. And so honestly, I think that really speaks for itself. All right, we only have a couple of products left. So the last uh, non eyeshadow product that I have here is an eyeliner. This eyeliner has shocked me recently and I really only picked it up on a whim when I was at Ulta. This is from NYX. And let me see if I can read this. This is the NYX Epic Wear Pencil Liner, and this is the green shade. I actually, because of my hooded lids and because of how watery my eyes can get, I struggle with having a uh, liner last in my waterline on my lower lashes, even in my upper lashes too. So I just thought that was just like a thing. I tried ColourPop, I tried higher end products, I tried lower end drugstore products. Nothing stayed in my waterline all day until I tried this. Shockingly, this green eyeliner from NYX stayed in my waterline and I actually had difficulties getting it off at the end of the day. Like, I know it's not great, but I kind of had to scrub down here to get it off at the end of the day, but it stayed. This was the first, like, colored liner, first completely gel liner that stayed in my waterline completely for a whole day. Yeah. I cannot wait. I want to try so many other colors in this line because this shocked me. And it, it really brought my green eyeshadow looks to the next level. It really made them pop. And even if I didn't do a green eyeshadow look, if I did a, a neutral look, but like the pop of green and lower lash line looked so nice. Ah, this amazing. It's affordable. It worked so well. And I really want to, after my no buy has ended, look into getting other colors from specifically this line. All right, last but not least, we have two eyeshadow palettes. And honestly, these kind of surprised me too because they weren't ones that I was intentionally reaching for, but also like I wasn't thinking about. The first one is from ColourPop. And this is the Just My Luck Green Eyeshadow Palette. And again, I feel like because I had that green liner, I was reaching more for green shadows outside of my current project pans. And this one, I reached for specifically when I was looking to do like a neutral lid and then a green lower lash line with that liner and this worked so well for that. It's so nice. I believe I have a full video using this palette and like demonstrating it back when it first came out. So I'll have that up in the cards if you're interested but I, I forgot how much I actually liked this palette until I brought it out again specifically to use my lower lash line. So I'm glad I have this. I do not believe it's available anymore because unfortunately everything ColourPop does is now limited edition, but I'm glad. I was reaching for this again kind of out of nowhere and appreciating it once more. All right, finally, we have a palette that I didn't think I was gonna bring out again and like as much as I did, but here we are. This is from Melt and this is the Millennial Pinks palette. And I have to say, I was using this differently than kind of what I was expecting. Too. So here we have it. It's really honestly like a pretty unique palette. You've got like smoky, silvery, dark shades, and then bright, light pink shades. I have to say, so this part of the palette on me, it looks so nude that it looks like you're almost not wearing any makeup, which is a look, admittedly. But looking at the shades here, I expected more of a pink tone, but you really have to build up the shades and they don't look as pink as they do in the pans. And that's me, like that's me, like pale, almost printer sheet ink, This I'm pale, okay? And that's how those shades look on me. So unfortunately, I don't know if these are really gonna work for a lot of people that are darker than me by any means, but for me, they look like a really, really just light nude kind of shade. That being said, I was able to use this entire part of the palette like that, and then when I wanted to get dark and smoky, I was able to go into here, and I'm also using this dark shade, which isn't really a black. It's like a blue-toned black in my brows, and I was just surprised. Like, I brought this out to use, I think, for one or two looks, and then I just kept it out, and I kept reaching for it, and I kept wanting to use it, and yeah, <laughs> so I'm surprised at how much I like this, and I keep reaching for this over my other palettes.
So that is it for all of my favorite products for October and November of 2020. Let me know down below what your favorite products have been and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.